Hello, my friends of sophisticated color grading. This is another session of the Baselight Learning Program. And today we will examine an often overlooked feature in Baselight, but it can be a quite handy one, from my opinion. And these are the view modes or view layouts. The session will not be too long. And I say, let's begin. Okay, so today we're talking about view modes or view layouts. And I first want to explain what I mean by that. View modes in Baselight are a way to view multiple images at the same time in the display output without using multiple cursors. One example is seeing the current cursor and a version of the current cursor that is set to bypass all basically bypassing the current grade in a split screen. Another scenario is that we want to do a split screen or a wipe with the DBS. So now here on the left, we see the DBS and on the right, we have our current cursor in a split screen. Or some people prefer to have a wipe between DBS and the current cursor. So all of this is possible with the view modes and I will quickly explain you how you can access them. The view modes are a bit harder to discover because they are not accessible via the graphical user interface. For example, they are not available here in the display menu. You have to use keyboard shortcuts or a grading control panel for them. If you're using a grading panel like the blackboard, then you hit the view button first. And then after the view button, you hit the numbers one through nine. So for the different view modes. If you want to change the view mode to a different one, hit view again, then hit another number following after that. If you're holding down the view key for a few seconds, then the view mode is latched. And then you just have to press the different numbers to directly access each view layout. To release the latch, just hold down the view button again for a few seconds. If you don't have a grading surface available, then you can use the keyboard shortcuts here on Linux. This is Control, Alt, and then the numbers one through nine. And on Mac, this is Command, Alt, and then numbers one through nine. And the difference here is that on the grading surface, you hit the buttons one after the other. So first you press view, then you press the number on the keyboard. You press all of these buttons all at the same time. And so what are the different view modes that we have available? I made a quick list here. So if we go to view one, then we go back to normal one by one cursor. Instead of hitting view one, a quicker way is just hitting the one by one key or on the keyboard, just hit F1. Number two brings you to the bypass all split screen. So a two by one layout that I just showed you a few moments before. Number three does a split screen two by one with the dark blue square, the DBS. Number four, a wipe with the DBS. And number five through nine show you different layouts of the previous and upcoming shots. And I think it's best if I just show them to you live and explain how they work. So first let's recap again live in that scene, the different modes. So first I'm holding down Alt Command 2. So this is my current cursor and I bypass all of the current cursor. Of course I can also zoom into one of the cursors and then the other one will follow along. Now I'm going to view mode three. This one I also showed before here, I can move the DBS and compare it with my current cursor. View mode four is the wipe between DBS and the cursor. And now coming to view mode five. So here we see our current image of the cursor in the center. And this is one shot before. I'm bringing back the overlay by hitting the view mode again. 
This has two shots before, three shots before, four shots before, and here the other way around. So this is the upcoming shot, the shot following after that, and so forth. When I'm moving through the timeline, we can see that in this view mode, our current cursor always stays in the center. So basically, whenever we're going, whenever we're hitting a new shot, the whole layout changes. So maybe I'm doing a quick playback here. So this is number five, current shot always stays in the center. Then we have a similar layout, which is view mode six, but there, this, but here it is about selected shots here with the red square selection. So here I can go through and select multiple shots in the cuts view. And we can see that only the selected shots are presented in that layout. And when I move through the shots, then the layout changes. Again, in this mode, our current cursor always stays in the center slot. Now I move on to view mode seven. So this is just a three by one layout. So one shot before current shot or shot of the where the cursor is currently located and upcoming shot. And so this has no relation to the red square selection here. But now watch when I hit play. So here the layout is more static and the, the shot with the cursor is moving along through the shots. So now if I pull back my cursor, you can see that the layout tries to stay more static so that not on every cut the whole layout changes. But of course, after every second cut, there is a change um, necessary in this mode. But just remember that there are some layouts where the cursor is not always centered. And on, in the next mode, we will see how this can make sense. So now I go to no mode number eight, which is again four shots before and four shots after. So no relation to the right square selection yet. But now watch when I pull through the timeline, the cursor moves through the shots. So the advantage of this one is that the layout will not change on every new cut, but it will, tr will try to keep the layout more static and will only move when it's really necessary. For example, here now I'm on the last shot in the layout and with every new shot, it now moves there. But if I go back, it tries to keep the layout static while going through the shots. And the view mode nine is the same thing with the cursor not fixed in the center, also a variable cursor, but this time again, based on the red square selection here that I can do in the timeline. So I'm jumping back to my summary slide. So here you can, you can see again how it's accessed. And here you see the summary of all the view modes. While you're working, you don't have that slide ready. So I will also show you quickly how you can find the info in the keyboard shortcuts manual. So I go to help keyboard shortcuts. And then it's on the second page here in the top right you can see the cursor view modes, how to access them and which number corresponds to which function. Okay, that's all for now. Yeah, that was a quicker one today. I hope it was still informative. Um, one common question I get about view modes is often, is there a custom mappable key if you have a Blackboard 2? or a slate control surface. And yes, there is one. Maybe I just quickly show, show that here on my machine. So here I have configured my machine, my machine with a slate. 
So if I op open chalk for slate, you can find them here in the action um, menu, display view, and here are the view layouts. So if I would like to, for example, a view layout four on a button, I could drag that here and maybe if some if I if I hold down shift and I press that button, I switch to view layout three. So that should now work. So this is also possible with a slate or blackboard too to have this directly mapped to a single key. So I hope this it was informative and see you next time.